And there's still no meeting scheduled between President Trump and President-elect Biden. Yeah, so what is not happening that usually happens during a presidential transition? Scripps reporter Joe St. George walks us through it. We are 59 days away from Inauguration Day here in Washington, D.C., and we know a turkey will be pardoned at the White House this week, but we do not expect a concession. So what is not happening that usually happens during a presidential transition? The American people have spoken, and they have spoken clearly. This election is over, but our principles endure. I congratulated Donald Trump and offered to work with him. Well, for one, there has been no obvious speech asking for unity, nor has there been any traditional Oval Office meeting like the one President Obama and President Obama and President Trump had in 2016. At the time, the nation was divided, and this was seen as a unifying moment. Beyond that, this non-traditional transition is already creating obstacles for President-elect Biden. For example, the General Services Administration may sound like an obscure government agency, but it is responsible for allowing the transition to start. Because it hasn't signed off on it yet, the president-elect has no access to taxpayer funds for travel or office space. But more importantly, the president-elect is not allowed until the transition starts to interact with current federal workers or members of the executive branch in the national security sector or the health sector. For example, the president-elect can't pick up the phone and call the Department of Health and Human Services and talk about vaccine developments or non-public pandemic related information. He isn't allowed to receive national security briefings or updates from the FBI either. The last time the federal government delayed the transition was back in 2000 because of the Florida recount. Selective hand recounts in the entire state of Florida. And when September 11th happened, less than a year later, the 9-11 Commission report placed blame on the delayed transition, arguing it hurt President Bush's ability to get his national security team on the job in a timely manner. This lack of transition has real implications for President-elect Biden beyond a speech or a photograph. He'll be playing catch-up when he takes office January 20th. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George.